mistakes or uh, she was being mischievous I'll leave it to the reaction by the God Education Service on point by point that she raised all I can say that arrears subsidies are in part of free SHS there are no arrears accumulated in free SHS because of course we started barely two months mm. so it couldn't be arrears CSH, uh, free SHS is not about subsidies it's about full absorption of the Ghana Education Service Council approved bill so it is not about free SHS is a scholarship for all Ghanaians who sat the 2070 BEC and for the few who went to what we call um, re-entry um, who qualified who got placed who got enrolled that government have decided that if you do these things, if you go through these loops, mm. I'll pay your fees for you. So Free SS Secretariat is under the Ghana Government Scholarship Secretariat. Mm. Uh, we are managing it on behalf of His Excellency the President, who is the vision bearer of the Free SHS policy. As to the comments of the lady, I don't want to dwell on that. Like I said, if there are arrears of feeding grants is an idea that we inherited that is born in the handing of our notes. Mm. If there is ideas in subsidy, it's ideas that we inherited that is born in the speaking notes. If there are ideas with progressively free SHS, which I think even the opposition NDC has admitted uh, that the finance ministry didn't pay. Uh, so it's nothing that I'm disputing. It's in the handing of our notes. Uh, it's ideas not of this government. It's ideas we inherited. But what have we done since we came here? When I talked about leadership, I'm talking about the fact that if you sit in this seat, it's up to you, the minister, to make sure that whether it's your arrears, whether it's your projects, are contained in the budget. Mm -hmm. You don't turn around and blame the Ministry of Finance for not paying when you haven't included it in the budget. Mm -hmm. The buses that there was a scramble in the... Uh, Independent Square, just before election, the buses that cars that went to the schools. Not a city was in the budget for 2016. Mm. So how will the Ministry of Finance pay you? And if you're a ministry, you can't just sit in your ministry and behave as if you're a god unto yourself. You sign contracts, you do things with direct recourse to the government's financial management. We all have to subject ourselves to the basket that we have of revenue that is distributed for our care and, uh, and our work in a year. Mm -hmm. That's why we go through the budget. Right. So if you go and do extra budgetary spending and you don't have money and, and, and you don't have money, you don't blame the finance ministry. I wouldn't do that. Uh, actually, it would be a cheap shot to blame other people unnecessarily for the mess that you've created. But we came to meet Arias on feeding grants for special schools. Isn't that pathetic? We came to meet areas in capitation that was supposed to remove cost barriers on parents in, in the introduction of the F cube. Mm. We came to meet areas as regards the f uh, progressively free sub SHS. We came to meet areas as to feeding grants for those on Northern scholarships and Northern Extraction scholarships. We came to meet areas on colleges of education. Uh, the government, after taking away the student allowance, decided to be paying for the feeding, uh, nearly 60 million. So we met all these areas. I can't say, that, but for those in this ministry, it's been cleared. It has. Let me give an example. For the 2017-2018 academic year, for the first time in their history, feeding grants to the Northern Scholarships went before school reopened. Mm. Teacher training allowance went before students went to school. And it's been dispersed for two months. The first years are having challenges because state hasn't enrolled them. Right. Not that there's no money, it's been paid. Capitation grant extended to cover all basic schools and special schools has been released for 2017-20 academic year. Feeding grants for special schools has gone. We've released, we've paid the arrears to do with the free SHS uh, subsidies going to secondary schools. So all those monies have been released. The colleges of education arrears, we paid 48. It was left with 12 that is being processed as we speak. So 
We've cleared these areas. Why? Because at the time that we were doing the budget, I made the first commitment, the charge on education, to pay those areas. Mm. The areas that are still are the audit service being audited happens to be teacher, teachers' allowances, 36 million. That has also even been included in this year's budget, yeah. where the audit service has to go through the potential. We have requested for the release of this year's allowances to teachers and got education service. We have made extra budgetary support or, or, or extra support in the budget for establishment grants for the first time last year. Every district direct, directorate of education had 1,000 cities to subsist on for a year. Mm. No wonder they were charging all manner of levies on pupils. This year, at least each one and every, each and single district is getting 60,000. So this is a government that has put its mouth and its arms and its strength and its money where he has shouted most, and that is into education, education, education. Is this why you were irked? Um, recently that all of these areas were sitting here, sitting at the ministry, they had not been cleared. Is this what necessitated your comments about your predecessor? No, I made no comments necessarily about the, my predecessor's person. Okay. I talk about his leadership in this ministry. Mm. And if he's being, she's being touted as an educationist and he led the ministry in this way, then it's an embarrassment to education. I've, I've given examples and I've spoken about the fact that the buses the bill is still there, we are scrambling for. Because just when, after we had done the budget, the bill for the buses landed on my table. Mm. So I called the technical people, what happened? He said, oh, the buses we distributed to the schools. Yes, they've distributed the buses to the schools. The schools are using it. Mm. This morning, SIC is on my neck as for the insurance that we haven't even paid. For those buses. For those buses. So, what do we do? We have to go to the Ministry of Finance and make a case that the buses are being used. We have to pay for it. But you've received some amount of backlash from the former president's office for attacking the... For which of the former presidents? President Mohammed's office. Of course, that is his leadership. So why wouldn't he attack me? I'm exposing the rot they left. Why wouldn't he attack me? But I wish the former president could have said, I made budgetary allowance to pay for the bus and it wasn't paid for. That would have been attacking me. I don't, for, for, for God, I don't listen to these things. I don't listen to this. And Nanaba, why did I say that? Two months ago, before the start of the free SHS, the former minister, against all protocol, was on radio station to radio station, lambasting the government that he's, he, she's seen no policy document, she's seen no budgetary line for the free SHS, and the free SHS is not true. I chose when to answer her. And I said, two months down the line, she comes back and she says, after all this started the progressive free SHS that we are continuing. And so I said, well, hold on, hold on. The two statements cannot stand. If you started it and we are continuing, then it behoves on for you to have produced the policy document, right? Where is your policy document for the progressive free SHS? Is there one? There's have you none. seen one? There's none. The 200 senior e-blocks that were being built, where is the policy document to back it? That talked about all the financing, Zelt, zero. Four years budget I stayed in parliament, they paid through get fund in general government revenue. Right. There was no policy document. She should show it. If she said she has it, she should give a copy to everybody. So if now you said two months ago, and you just woke up last week after one month or so of implementation of it, they say that we are continuing your program. Then why were you asking me for the policy document? So that was the hypocrisy of that statement. And I'm saying that, and I gave an example. Sir Tepe came back after the budget. He didn't come to parrot criticisms. He came to praise the Minister of Finance in the circumstance of the budget envelope for even being able to reduce taxes. And I was expecting the minister who has been here, who has seen the challenges, to contribute positively, not to turn into a propaganda machine outfit of the outgoing government. And I'm saying that word for word, word for word, if she tells herself as an educationist, which I believe she is, and a good professor as that, but her leadership in this ministry, as far as fighting for 
monies to prosecute an agenda of a government is, is an embarrassment to education. I only draw that statement. And that is it. It's not a personal statement. It's about the leadership that was exercised. Okay. Here. I would want to uh, veer off a bit to uh, the policy itself. Um, for uh, a period, social media was awash with pictures of students lying on corridors and verandas, on bare floor, uh, on blocks or on mattresses, you know, not in the dormitories. And they say, your, your, the opposition, and I'm sure some of your colleagues in Parliament have had reason to talk to you about it, they say that um, the policy has no direction towards the provision of facilities, such as uh, uh, the, the, the furniture for the students to sit on, uh, for the beds, uh, and all of that. What do you say? Is there, a, is there a direction to tackle the resources for free SHS? The president, the first statement he made at Okiapuman on the free SHS, made the point, emphasized, that we are not oblivious to the fact that in expanding an access mm -hmm. that we are aiming to do, there will be challenges. He talked about the need to do new buildings, right. the need to expand infrastructure, the need to provide more teaching and learning materials, the need to do more to make sure that the initial teething challenges will be overcome. Who gives birth to a child? Who's crawling to walk? Who, the child doesn't fall on the way? Do you go and kill your child because of that? It just doesn't add up. That we acknowledge it. And we have got documents that I've shown to see. Remember, I can show you one here. That lists all secondary schools. Because we did put in a request to those schools that write to us about the challenges that right. we have. Did they all write? Yes. All the schools okay. that responded are on this list. Okay. And we've compiled it. We've done a tender. We will not go ahead and do things which, because government has to pay for it. We've done a tender, we've done a compilation, we need about just about 70,000 mono desks, mm. about 13,000 bank, bank beds, about 4,333 mattresses, dining hall tables, benches. We've added up and we are doing tenders to satisfy that. But the difference here is that, I can show you, if a school says, I need 500, a technical institute says I need 500 mono desks, mm -hmm. but no bunk beds, no mattresses, no dining hall chairs, no tables, no nothing. Is it because of the free SHS? Mm. Where will the children be sleeping? So these are chronic challenges these schools have been facing. Right. It's got nothing to do with free SHS. It's got nothing to do with free SHS. If there's a school without a toilet, what has it got to do with free SHS? Or if you go and put some students together and say, sit on blocks and let me take you a picture, like it happened in Pakuso, where the headmistress has given a whole report on what happened about one station going there and telling them, let's take pictures and take your pictures. Because the heads know if they're going to be truthful. Since February, we've requested them to give us notice of how many students they can contain. Mm. There was an issue about venting. Yeah. There. People have gone there, and it's totally false. Because if you went to school in the north, it gets to a time of the year, people leave their rooms to sleep outside. Mm -hmm. And that is the same government that builds schools without ceilings, and without electricity. And even in the morning and the midday, kids can't stay in brand new classrooms. I haven't complained. We would rectify those things. But like I demonstrated to you, a government does things logically and provides funds to support. The tender is out, people have seen, people are participating, they are doing evaluations. We would meet these challenges. But I want to put on the record, we are aware of challenges. Not all the challenges is just necessarily because of free SHS. Right. Some have existed. There was a school in Accra that people went, there's a, oh, one of the famous first cases that the headmaster was all over the air. Uh, the students were sitting on the block. My question was, last term, where were the, where were the seats? <laughs> Uh, we have to confront the challenge. Since we started free education in parts of this country for 60 years, have we, has any government been able to solve all the educational problems in those parts of the country? Yeah. No. Government go, government come, government continues. But you don't say that I gave birth to two children. I won't give birth to my th third child because the first one died. No. We won't do that. We won't do that. It is time 
that our international obligations, our constitutional impositions, have seen the relevance of secondary education to be free. SDG 2030 says by 2030, mm. a child should have a right to education up to secondary level. Okay. I'll move away from free SHS in a bit, but uh, just to, you know, hammer on a few of the criticisms that have come up. Um, a couple of days ago, I spoke to your colleague, uh, the Honorable ABA Fusaini. And he says that some schools are practicing what he calls apartheid. Um, the first year students are being fed separately uh, because there haven't been any monies for their food. So their food the first years that are being fed have not had any money. That's a total lie. Mm. I just thought you said that 20% have gone, the people are asking yes. for the rest. Mm. So is it true? So, well, he says it's not enough. Oh, actually, those who want to see glasses as half full, <laughs> they always see it as half full. But when are, we getting, how, when are these schools getting the rest? You see, we do analysis in the free okay. secretariat. I'll say this. Before a student entered, mm. the heads had t t told us how many students they could admit. Okay. Even in the relation of boarding and day. Mm. So we've trained the heads, we give them laptops with programs on. Okay. That if you enroll a, a kid, you de enter the details, we see it in a cry immediately. Okay. Okay. But you know how it goes. People will change schools, people will do things. So we agreed at the implementation stage that we would give before you a kid enters the school, we'll give you twenty percent of the money. Mm. Submit the returns of your proper enrollment as to the pictures, the details, the biometric data right. of the kids that have enrolled and come and collect all the other entitlements due your school. Have they? 57 schools out of 675 have only submitted. Only 57? Only 57. So the question is why are these not submitted? Mm. Why are they not submitted? In fact, the analysis we've done based upon the enrollment we've seen Nearly 60 schools would have to return money to the center. How? Why? How? You said you would admit 300 students. Based upon that, for a border, it's 1,000. That means your entitlement that year is 300,000 for the school, for first year students. So we said we're going to give you 20%, which is 60,000. Lava. We're giving you the 60,000. Now, we've seen through the enrollment figure that you've only enrolled 100. Mm. The returns you are bringing includes returns of people you have provided uniforms to. We are supplying textbooks. We are supplying exercise books. Mm. So bring us the returns and let's make sure that if you, are being sh you have a shortfall, we'll top it up. Right. You haven't brought the returns, but the ones that you have entered on the computer that we can monitor in Accra tells me 100 out of 300. So that means you, are, you deserve only 100,000, not 300,000. I've given you 60,000. Mm. Okay. There are items on the bill that we are going to pay directly, even though the school has done it, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, uniforms. The heads, the charts said the schools have stock. We've said we'll pay for it. But so when you issue them out, just have the receipts and the validations and we'll pay the, the, the supplier. Right. You haven't brought it. So if we take the house dresses, the school uniforms, the textbooks, the supplementary readers, the medical examination, those bills that we are paying for, like the medical examination, GGES has have an MOU with Ghana Health Service to go to the schools and do the medical examinations. The, school, the money won't get to the school. The ECG that is putting up lights off in schools, mm -hmm. instead of running to us, we've had a meeting with them. We'll pay them from center so that they don't go and switch off any school, any secondary school in Ghana. So those are all parts of the bill that adds to 1,000 cities. Right. Feeding costs for the whole term, which we have run probably one and a half months. The feeding cost for the whole term is 435. So even now, and I'm going to not transfer all the money to you, because those things that bulk Buffer stock supplied through its agents. We will pay, we've, we've processed checks of nearly 80 million Ghana cities to buffer stock. Mm. So it's not all the money that is coming to you. When we do the sums of things that they are purchasing, that we have to give them money, things that we are they are purchasing that we have to pay, and things that we are buying in bulk, like textbooks, like exercise books, like notebooks, like 
core readers. Mm. It is nearly 60% of the money that should be sent to a school. Mm. So if you, we owe you 100,000 and we've given you 60,000 and 60% we are paying from the center, you know you have to pay us back 20,000. Right. So it is important, and the Ghana Education Service have emphasized that to the head teachers, that they should submit the validated returns. We haven't gone asking for anybody. But, but what, because is the money is in the, what is stopping them? Ghana from? Education Service can give you a better answer mm. because they are the owners of the schools. And as I speak, the chairman of the GS Council, the CEO of the National Buffer Stock, the coordinator of the Free SHS Secretariat, and the Deputy Director General of Ghana Education Service are on a regional tour meeting all heads to iron out any problems. Okay. Um, and now the very last question on that is the source of funding for uh, the free SHS. Um, Sent Ghana uh, just yesterday questioned uh, the sustainability of the, of the whole policy. Um, and they were basing it on the voluntary education fund announced by the finance minister. And uh, they're saying that that source is unpredictable. If you're asking people to contribute, you cannot tell how much you'll be getting at See, the end of that, the year. That, 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 that is being a with the truth. Okay. Did the finance minister ever say that the voluntary contribution will contribute 10% to the free SHS? So wh wh where are they added up their subs? And where did the finance minister say the voluntary education fund is going to free SHS? Mm. Is education about only free SHS? Absolutely not. Not the number. So let's be objective a bit in this country. So what's the source of funding for the food? We have paid first step. Okay. So if there was no money, how did we pay? Does government still continue to raise revenue? Of course. I'm, I'm sure we, NPP hasn't raised a single revenue, have we? Have you? You haven't? I'm, I'm, I'm shocked <laughs> for those who have been in government to ask this question. <laughs> it is about prioritization. That's why I talk about leadership. The President of the Republic, Nanado Danko Akufuado, mm. says his number one priority is education. So if it means all the oil revenue accruing to Ghana will be used to fund it, so be it. Just two days ago, on the, on the floor of Parliament on the debate, mm. you didn't you hear the minority crowing that the Office of Government machinery has a budget of two billion? Yes. Free SHS alone has been budgeted for nearly 1.3 billion for next year. And some are asking why it's sitting at the office of the president. But, no, but I started by saying it's part of the government scholarship scheme. Okay. Okay. They have operated in government for the last eight years. They are not in feeding grants, university scholarships. It's at the government scholarship secretariat. Mm -hmm. It has always, since independent, been part of the office of the president. Right. Okay. Let's take a break. We'll come back and talk about quality of teaching in schools mm -hmm. and other issues that you've been sending to us to put to the Minister of Education. We'll be right back. This is State of Affairs. The Idolicious Challenge. My mom versus my mom. Mmm, the mother-in-law's there. Eh? What will you make? My son's favorite cake. Hey! And one is here, what is butter? Because you have vanilla. vanilla. And a sweet chocolate flour book is simple. Fried your milk is good. For some baking powder, in chicken craft flour book full from. Not coming in our fry. I say baking. Not for chocolate icing, gusu. Your son stole my daughter. I want to have a mama cake recipe. But mama updates Madonna with special coconut icing. I'm a mama mm. dot. As a boy will feel, yeah? <laughs> this just shows that two of you were meant to be. Both recipes are easy to prepare and a good source of calcium and protein. Go on, flash us for more recipes to try at home. Nestle, good food, good life. Sasso, 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 
Tom Tom Preco, Nani Shamne dear, Ed Demus Ronco. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you better watch my moves, eh? <laughs> yeah. You are not concentrating. Why? Too much for Allah, my brother. Tell me about it. This morning, I've had only one person down. We better stop this driving and find something better. I couldn't even leave chop money for my wife this morning. Ooh. And you want six children? Why not? My father had ten. Those were the old days. Well, Not now. Well, four down, two to go. Yeah, I have wise that. See, we are all suffering here. But at least I manage better. Exactly. With your two children. Yesterday, Kweku was sick, the youngest. Because I want to take him to the hospital. You see? You could not even afford common draw trophy. Insult me. No, I'm not insult. Hello? 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 Is there a problem? Is it? Oh, oh. Oh, you, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Good life, it's an everyday thing. This is brought to you by Ghana Health Service, US Aid and Partners. Welcome back to State of Affairs. I'm here tonight with the Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempen. I want us to discuss quality of teaching now. I know you, apart from being a medical doctor, you are a buff of education. You believe in education. And having toured the country, I'm sure you have seen uh, the quality of teaching in this country and the resources, the teaching and learning materials available. How have they struck you? I think through this, teachers generally work in some very trying conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, not well motivated not well resourced, doing their best. Uh, what we can say is that uh, what they are offering probably can be improved. Okay. And we would work towards we generally lifting up the standard, the learning outcomes that we are getting in our education. In 2003, when Ghana offered itself for TIPS, the International Association that measures math and science mm. achievement tests in the country. Uh, Ghana was probably in the low halves. They measure it every four years. In 2007, Ghana was still in their low halves. In 2011, Ghana was the bottom. The next measure went was in 2015. Instead of putting in measures, to improve our achievement levels. We rather left that society because we didn't want to be measured. It's like having a cancer and living in denial. Yeah. It will come back to eat you. Whilst we left Thames or PISA, we ended up with EGRA, early grade reading, yeah. and early grade maths, EGRA and EGMA achievements. The last one that was done in 2015, the number, in 2015, only 2% of our primary two pupils achieved the proficiency at that level. Mm -hmm. I have problems with EGRA, EGMA, and all those tests because of what I've found. And I'll tell you in a minute. Mm. But if only 2% of our pupils are achieving the proficiency at primary two, is it any wonder we are having functional illiteracy even out of universities? No. You can't uh, send garbage in, garbage out. Right. If at our, at the level in which our youth, our kids are most impressionable, from KG to primary two, primary four, primary six, mm. when you can change 
the, the place where a child lives and in one year can pick up another language as if it's a fluent, natural born mm. person in the We don't put our best talent to teach those kids. We have a problem. We have a problem. And all the internal studies that I've done are talking about teaching and learning what is going on in our schools. Who is supervising? What is the curriculum? Mm. So I come to the ministry and I don't know anything. You know, I don't know anything about my love, apart from my love for books. I don't know anything about education. So I started asking basic questions. I said, yes, that's, that's, that's test. That said 2%. What was it? It was oh, an assessment of all the primary two pupils with a standard test. So only 2% of them. Okay, okay. Can you give me a copy of your curriculum? Right. Zero. You never saw it? There is no one. Oh, when Professor Adam Mohamed Sad did this educational commission, mm -hmm. the next one was to do the curriculum. And we never, we've never been given money to do it from 2009 to date. So there is no curriculum? There is no curriculum. Okay, before we even go to curriculum, what is the standard that a child we put in the public education, primary one, primary two, primary three, should achieve before he or she moves on to the next class? Mm -hmm. Pupil standards. Can we have a copy? No, we don't have one. So if you don't have the standards, you can't develop a curriculum. Because the curriculum should achieve the standards. Right. If you don't have a curriculum, you can't have a syllabus. And you can't even have set teaching and learning materials out of that syllabus to satisfy the curriculum. So how then are you assessing the kids based upon what? Then it got worse. The conference of heads of big C schools, then in Kabia, mm -hmm. said, Minister, it's got worse. What you are saying is just the tip of the iceberg. Classroom teachers are not permitted to ask their children or set exams for their kids they are teaching. Whoa, you are shocked, Anaba. If your class one teacher is not setting the exams question, your class two is not setting the exams, what is happening to you? So who sets the question? Oh, they were collecting fees from the kids and people from far away, the district offices and the regional offices were setting the questions. So how are they setting the questions? Private individuals were going around the schools marketing something they call scheme of work. Right. Right. That is why studies are telling us that even teachers in basic schools, in Ghana, public basic schools, don't want to put their kids in the schools they teach. Because there's nothing. That's shocking. Shocking. So that is, see, when I talk about educational leadership, you expect people who know to keep quiet, but during their time they did nothing. If I'm lying, they should show it. I was told the same people have been there for years. Mm -hmm. Doc, when President Amon Mensa, and he's still working with us, his roadmap that we should follow. It ended when the last 2008 government ended. Nothing since then has been done in curriculum side. So we have to start. Mm -hmm. Thank God we have these educational experts still alive and they are contributing to making sure we fill those gaps. Okay. Even on the teacher side, the question that you asked, mm -hmm. it's just this year that the DFID started a few years back has been able to, for the first time, completed teacher standards in this country for initial teacher training. Mm. Has done the curriculum framework and about supporting the colleges of education to develop a curriculum. The current curriculum that they use, developed by University of Cape Coast to be used in the diploma training college, is not fit for practice, it's not fit. It's outdated, it has to be improved. Thanks to the support of the British government through TIFA, DFID and TTL, we've completed. But we've taken it to cabinet for cabinet to approve of it. Mm. So we started process and rolled it out. Now, because of the curriculum and the quality of teaching, we have to up the standards. You up the standards by the entry requirements and by the certificates you give. Mm. 
and because you want them to come and do something good for our impressionable kids. So content matters. It's not only pedagogy. It's not only teaching and methodology. Yeah. It's about content. So if you say you are going to do early childhood education, you should have a content to know how you can teach those kids to read, to write, to add, to subtract, to divide, to think critically so that they can become, they would have the foundational skills necessary for lifelong learning and better learning outcomes. So it's no wonder that since we started junior high school or senior high school, less than 30 percent achieve grade A1 to C6 mm -hmm. when they are exited. We even exited them earlier to the free SHS. We exited them at age 15. Now what government is saying that we want kids from six years or four years from kindergarten to stay in school to the age of 80. I would prefer people to exit school at the age of 18 than 15, where by our own laws they are not even qualified to work. Mm -hmm. So that is what the government is trying to achieve. And this is a government that needs support. We need everybody's hand on neck. We have never said uh, everything is rosy. Was it rosy last year? Last year, by this time, first years haven't gone to school. You remember? They went to school at some way that later in December. This year, for the first time in about eight years, all first years went together with continuous students. When I went to school, I went three days before continuous students came. What has happened? Then you look at the time, time on task, they call it, or contact time in our SSS and in our basic schools and everything. Look at the SSS. The syllabus that has been derived by WAIC mm -hmm. says that the duration for the SSS program should be nine terms. The syllabus, WAIC syllabus, mm -hmm. is a nine term syllabus. So if the kids get to school, in December, when the first term is almost off, mm -hmm. they've lost one term. And we, it's a record. They never went to school in September. When did they start exams? Now they move the exam forward, forward, forward. And I'll tell you the, a problem that arose this year and previous years. They start the exams in February, which is about the second term, beginning of the second term. So the kids finish the exams about five days into the third term. So it means that the second term was used yeah. for exams and the third term they are at home. How many terms are that? Two. Two. Add that to the first term they lost. How many is that? Three. Three. Take it from the nine terms. So it means the SSS, they were doing it in six terms. No wonder probably when we went to four years and they were doing the same nine term syllabus in four years. The achievement records were better. Would you revisit it? But if we can achieve the nine terms, which we then, are, we are doing, it's, it's going it to should be improve yeah. before we can think of anything. Okay. So this year they went to first term. We've already decided, spoken with Waik, that you are writing the exams on our behalf, not your behalf. Absolutely. We want the exam to start when exams started, May, June. And we did O levels and A levels. It was May, June. And even in May, it was only orals and practicals. The real exam started in June. So that is one term about two things about quality curriculum, instructional time, teacher education, uh, students' time to, 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 to study. It's all been all over the place. We want to. Uh, there's a reform team that is going on in curricular reform, mm -hmm. there's a cabinet memo that we want to change the structure of our educational system and see how best we can help to improve educational standards. Right. Uh, now, um, I, I just want to bring in uh, this matter about YEC, since you mentioned YEC and exam leakages. I'm sure you've met the board and the management of YEC. I mean, and I remember, was it two years ago, a major leakage and you were completely cheesed off. I remember interviewing you. You were cheesed off uh, that exams could leak at such, you know, stupendous levels. And what have you been picking up from them? Are you seeing any efforts to make the system any better? Even though I, they're very I should, independent. I, I should ask, what happened last year or this year? <laughs> the market improvement. Um, these are things we should work as a human institution. These are things that we should work up. And, I, and I'll put it on record again. I told Waik 
that they have a responsibility to his house leakage. If they don't improve, we will introduce other examination bodies. We will introduce other examination bodies. You think they're enjoying a monopoly? And that's they really enjoy a monopoly. And it can make you uh, a bit slow on things. Even adopting new technology and things. Uh, just last week, or early this week on Monday, I got a letter from one examination body uh, that wanted to introduce technology that prevents leakage, that you go to the exam room. You know, ex Waik has examination centers, yes. and you pick your question from the machine mm. so that nobody even has access to it. To, 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 to. So there are, there are things that Waik itself is introducing to prevent leakage. But the number, it was a collusion. It was a collusion. I don't blame only Waik. I don't blame only Waik. Parents in some areas were contributing money to schools to buy questions and buy teachers to go and teach and cheat. Uh, when the motivations are high, when parents realize that if their children don't move on, their life is truncated, that speaks to you about a level of interest in education, this collusion can happen. And if proper leadership is not exercised, mm. it, would, it would fester and it will become like a a fungating wound sore. You can't stay there. And that is what you talk, talked about. That is what blew some of us off. Because it affects everything. Waik itself, one of the discussions I've had with them, previously people could finish O levels and A levels and walk into a university in the world. Now there are exams. Waski, I'm not sure how many countries that are eligible for them to enter the university. Yeah. So they themselves, I've started talking to them about benchmarking. Uh, because we don't train Ghanaians for only Ghana. We are in a global world, yeah. a village. So everything we do should be competitive. Why is it that in the 80s and 80s and 70s and 60s, our students were out of O level and A level to compete everywhere? Mm -hmm. uh, but now we can't. They ask you to do all sorts of things. Mm. If a graduates are being asked to go and speak English into <laughs> a certain white microphone in British <laughs> Council before they go and do their exams, yeah. uh, it worries us. It worries some of us. It, it's really worrying. I get every day people coming to question people's certificates. Yeah. What is the accreditation board doing? What are the regulators doing? How come there are so many university colleges around without necessary accreditation? Is it only the private colleges? No. How come the public colleges or, or public universities start and introduce courses without accreditation? People should be sanctioned. Because you are toying with the lives of young people. What happened in Methodist College of some years back, it's still happening in our public university. Methodist was a private. Yeah. It's still happening in our public. We should stamp it out. We should stop it out. So we have to work together in education because our certificates are interlinked. Because when we get uh, blacked out, it's the country that suffers. And those of us who have gone to school all their lives here will suffer more. So we have to work together, the journalists, the press, the media, to expose these things. The GES should take sanctions against. I told Waik, how is it that you can cancel examinations of students? And still, we don't hear punishments or invigilators, mm -hmm. which you choose. What was their response? None. Mm -hmm. I said, the last time you counseled, where you counseled, I want to see the invigilators' names and their punishment. If you take action against them, I would insist that why Ghana Education Service takes them out of their schools. So we have to work together. All right. Um, you're still watching State of Affairs. We'll come back with the last batch of questions to the Honorable Dr. Matthew Opokupembe, the Education Minister. Do stay with us. Madam, I want prosecute your herbal tea. What is this? I said I want prosecure herbal tea, not capsule. This also be for your night problem. Mm. 
Okay, please don't go. I have some. To improve urine flow. Ah. Do not let anyone deceive you. There's nothing like Prosecure capsule. It is Prosecure herbal tea. Just boil it and drink it. That's all. Prostacure from Medimosis Prostate Center is a well formulated food supplement acclaimed worldwide to improve urine flow. Now available at all pharmacies, filling station shops, and shopping centers nationwide. Contact the term Accra and Kumasi branches with the numbers on your screen. Visit our new ultra modern diagnostic center at Trazako Valley opposite the Westgate. Prostacure food supplement improves urine flow in men. More and more people are using MTN mobile money in their everyday lives. Hear that? She just paid her kids' school fees. She just paid for her lunch. And this man just paid his tithe. And this guy just paid for his shoes. No, 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 no. Hey. You just send money to the old lady again, hey, eh? Sorry, <laughs> <It's necessary. laughs> Very it's necessary. Like money in your pocket. <laughs> Keep up with the time. Got a payment to make? Just momo it. It's that simple, secure, and convenient. Welcome to the sound of better money. MTN, everywhere you go. Welcome back to State of Affairs with the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Matthew Opoku Perempe. Now, uh, let's talk about teachers and licensing them. Uh, when you first mentioned it a few months ago, there were some who embraced it as the way to go. Others not too happy. Of course, you expected that. But how far is that directive going? Has it been formalized? Well, thank you, Rama. It's, it's one of the low points in my leadership of this ministry because I never have never said anywhere publicly about teacher licensing. Mm. It was a mischievous journalist who went to reproduce an exact headline of a 2014 August Times newspaper right. where the executive secretary at that time who is now an MP in meeting with the teacher unions on their way forward on teacher licensing, the topic. So he reproduced that in 2017, took the name of the <laughs> executive secretary out, put in the current executive secretary and put my picture. Right. That is the state of journalism in some of our most popular media houses. They came apologizing for the harm had been done. The 20, 2008 Educational Act prescribed three regulators. The National Teaching Council to regulate mm -hmm. teachers. And look, it's not only primary school teachers. It's regulating all teachers in the country. Mm -hmm. The National Council for Curricula and Assessment that develops the curriculum, brings out the timetables, uh, certifies the books that are readable in our schools and all that. And the National Inspectorate Board, uh, where we have the schools, the chief inspector of schools, who has to license and accredit and operate, um, give operating permit for schools, and shut down schools that are failing based upon other things. So those regulators, the, the law was passed in 2008. But of course, when that law was passed, the next steps that should have taken is that these three bodies had almost the same bodies within the Ghana Education Service. Mm. They have the inspectorate division, 
they had the teacher education teacher education division and they had a curriculum and research division so these bodies were doing the same work a bit within GES as the national regulators were supposed to do but these are the quality enhancers they ensure quality in our schools whether it's to do the teachers, whether it's to do with the students, whether it's to do, and it is across Ghana, whether it's private or public schools. So they had not been allowed to work, and there was a lot of conflict. So in 2014, the government at that time then decided, look, with the, together with the teacher unions, this is where we should go. UNESCO is going towards teacher professionalization. Why? Nurses have a professional body, National yeah. Nursing and Midwifery Council. Mm -hmm. Doctors have the GMA. The G yeah, General Medical Net Council. Council. Yeah. The pharmacists have a pharmacy council. The architects have a registration council. The engineers have a council. The, uh, the lawyers have a general legal council. In fact, they are the protectors of the profession in every country you go to. The councils. So for teachers, it's a welcome move. The UNESCO, like I said, has documents that it's agreed with teacher unions and things like that. Our own teacher unions in Ghana are pro-licensing. But it has to. It's a new thing that we're establishing. It has to go through a process. Right. Thank God the Japanese government through JICA is supporting that process. So they've come out with document upon document upon document. As we speak, they are chosen five districts that they are doing piloting. Mm. So it's an ongoing process. So why a media station all of a sudden decides to make it look as if it's something that is dropping from the sky by a lunatic somebody <laughs> sitting somewhere without consultation? It's not true. Donna, it is not true. Okay. The unions will work with the professions. The professional bodies are owned by the professions. The unions and the teachers, they are going to own it. And they are going to decide on who can call himself a teacher in this country. It's the doctors who decide who is called a doctor. And it's the lawyers. It's not the number of years you spent in the university doing law that makes you a lawyer. It is your practicing license that is given by the General Legal Council that makes you a lawyer. Mm -hmm. The, the pharmacists, the same thing. And that the teachers will do the same thing. It is not the government that is going to regulate them. It's the, they themselves that are going to regulate so that we don't have quack teachers. Okay. Now, the last question before we wrap up is ICT education. Uh, normally when you go to schools, especially those in the rural areas, you, you, you see ICT teachers, you know, struggling to teach children, and I'm sure you've seen a number of videos of children uh, learning ICT. For a tech-savvy uh, minister like you, seeing a video of children clicking on stones, uh, supposedly being a mouse, what's your plan for ICT? Do you have a special uh, uh, plan for ICT education in this country? See, people look at ICT as a uh, uh, people have a thing as a, as, a, as a tool or as a course or something. Mm -hmm. But it's both. Mm -hmm. so when ICT started, if, you are, if you, they employed computer technicians or computer scientists from banks, mm -hmm. from universities, yeah. to go and work in bank to deal with the ICT. Now they don't. Yeah. If, if, if you're a banker, you're working in a bank, you should know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So it's both a course and a tool or a nibbler. It has remained so. But 21st century work is around ICT and technology. Technology has been digitized. We are in a digital age, and everything is digitized. So in education, we have to have a digital literacy roadmap. You talk about tablets. Mm. There's only one part. The content of the tablets is another part. The operating system the connectivity, uh, everything, and there are different parts. How you add all up, the apps that you develop to enable things to talk to each other. So that now you have something in your car, when I'm sitting, oh, I want to go and visit Nanaba. Mm -hmm. Then it responds, you have three Nanabas on your phone, which are you talking <laughs> about? The one that works in GH1 or the one that works in Ghana Maritime? Oh, Ghana Maritime. 
20 minutes drive to her house. Do you want to avoid traffic? Is there, is there, is there a feature of a lot of technologies added up to do? Somebody just told me the largest hotel chain in the world is Airbnb. They don't own a single hotel. Hmm. Right? They've, the largest taxi company in the world is Uber. They don't own a single taxi. What have they done? They've managed to put different technologies into an app that me and you enjoy. So ICT in education has got different components. Those that write applications, those that build the system, those that do the content publishers that have digitized their content and things. We want to put it all together in our digital roadmap. So that when you go to a body like NACA I talked about, they should have, when they are buying books now, they should have e-books. Mm. This Ghana Education Service should have Ghana Education Service e-store, where a kid who is privileged anywhere in the country can log onto that store and get the books to read. Not only that, for the unprivileged kid, we have to make sure that an ICT as a leveler happens, mm. such that instead of printing and cutting down trees and printing paper and reading and people don't know whenever everybody is touching and feeling, we have all become touchy feeling to our systems. Mm -hmm. I was looking around here in the interview that we are doing, and at any time, see everybody is on the phone. There are only six of us here. We can't even communicate. We are communicating amongst ourselves through even text whilst we are here. That is the new world that we are going. Mm -hmm. So we have to use ICT as a leveler such that in the rural area, if we can put an offline, offline, online, offline server, the kids there don't get lost out. So we have a digital road bar that we are rolling. Mm. We have an iBoxes that are revolutionary. I recently met some IBM people in Maputo. They said, Minister, can you allow us to take one of your iBoxes to America? I said, ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I hear what Facebook has done in Kenya. <laughs> yeah. They went to a Kenya startup thing, yeah. took one thing, they, put, they patented it in America before the Kenyans realized it. Mm. So there are a lot we want to do in ICT, and we are starting. I think my deputy minister in charge of science says that he wants to choose 20 schools that we can start coding. Okay. I want to bring coding as far low as primary schools. And we are even linking it up to our vocational and technical education so that p kids while in school can get certification in IBM or right. Microsoft or things so that they can even work from home. So there's a lot we want to do in our digital literacy roadmap. And we'll be unveiling, we are working closely with the Ministry of Communication in that direction. They are the lead agency in our communication field. We have to engage them. One district, one factory can bring about uh, assembly plants of Kindle readers or Kindle-like readers. Yeah to all help in our leverage with, as far as uh, ICT is concerned. Many thanks, Thank Dr. Matthew Pokupempe, also known as Napo. Pleasure talking to you. A oh. lover of Manchester United. Absolutely. You <laughs> had to add And that that talk, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much for talking to us. Thank That's you. it for State of Affairs for tonight. We'll see you on Thursday.